And what's up, guys? This is the Always on Top podcast. And I've always wanted to do a podcast, you know, but I never really had the the means or the know how. So I'm I'm kind of just niggering this shit. But other than that, um, you know, I've always like I. I've had a voice. People say I can talk really good. So I've always wanted to do a podcast. And plus, I'm really into like Joe Rogan and shit like that. And I've always had this this idea that things would be um, awkward because like it's like I'm talking to myself. I want to have people on the podcast, but um, I just don't have the, the equipment right now. But I think that I'm be able to get two mics and then we'll we'll work it out eventually. But for right now, we're just, you know, nigga rigging this shit, like I said. But for real, what I really want to start with was uh, really my gripes. And it's like, for real, right now, in this city, Huntsville, which is where I'm from, um, this shit is awful, honestly. It's terrible. Like they hate on you so much, and it 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 takes so much, and you have to have a certain rep or a certain name or a certain image just to get somewhere or get recognition or be put on stage. And I've talked about this a lot in my music. Like people honestly didn't feel like I could fit a panel, like I could fit the the stage. Like I felt like I people wouldn't. You feel me? Like, I felt like people felt like I wasn't ready, which may or may not have been true. But what I will say is my music is definitely ready. And definitely I have music to where these people, when I put it in a room, they they shut the fuck up and listen. That's the only way I can put it in, like, simple layman's terms but back to what i was saying my gripes and i say this to say that there's people who have my name always on top and these people some of them and i'm just gonna go ahead and throw this out the way cam is perfectly in the clear is more on my end with Cam than anything. Like, Cam, he hits me consistently over and over. And it's like, I love you, Cam. I understand that you're going through certain things. But it's like, I I don't know what to do at this point. And that's a different, you feel me? But what 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 I will say is that people who have my name, some of these people are funny acting. Can't even get them to answer their phone. And it's like, motherfucker, you rep always on top, but you don't answer the phone for the nigga who name you have. Niggas just want to rap for the persona. This is just, this is not, it's never been for a persona for me. It's always been about the art. And it's like, certain shit, like, why? Um... It's like, if you say that you're always on top, why the fuck can I get you to answer the phone just to check on you? And it's like, we're making money together. We're, you feel me, doing this, doing that. Then we should be locked in. There should be no issue or even thought about mistrust. Because it's like, I grew up around the streets all my life and dealt with much harder, much harder drugs than weed. And nothing's ever came up missing with anybody. Ever. (laughs) So it's like if I come in and it's like now you want to question everybody because motherfucker, you leave the door open for anybody to come in and take whatever the fuck they want. And now when some shit goes missing, that's when you want to you wanna be like, 
oh well now let's crack down let's do this like w well we're gonna have to move this certain way when you should have been moving that certain way the entire time because i've came in and out of here saying like hey bruh what the fuck are you gonna do if somebody come in here bro your door's never fucking locked i walk in every time and there have been times when I've walked in in this bitch and I've walked in, let's just say, I've walked in multiple trap houses, multiple trap houses, never took anything, by the way. And then I'll come back and then I'll tell them like, hey, bro, get the fuck right, bro, because... <clears throat> <clears throat> Because if I was anybody that wanted to take something, I had the perfect opportunity. Like two, three days ago last week when I walked in here and there's nobody here. Your door is fucking unlocked. So anybody could have came in here. I'm not the type of person to do that. But if somebody was of that mindset... And they just so, just so happen to stumble on, stumble on your house trying to get some weed, get what the fuck you selling. And they walk in, doors unlocked, by the way, as it always is. And they look around and they're like, where's everybody at? Oh, nobody's here. That's the perfect opportunity for whatever I'm looking for. I might as well find it. And shit, y'all keep him pound. Goddamn. <coughs> but y'all are keeping pounds in here. And if I'm looking for 10, 20, a little dub to spin here and nobody's here. And I know y'all got the weed here. Shit, I might as well find it and get where the fuck I'm looking for. Y'all not even going to notice I got a pound. But if I'm that type of, if I want to get off, if I want to get off, fuck it. Take the whole fucking pound. But the thing about it is my pound was here and his pound was here. They're both together. I took my, you see, I went over to my cousin. I went over to my cousin's house and I was like, yeah, you feel me? I got this or whatever. And then she she tells me like, hey, don't keep your don't keep your stuff at other people's house. And I'm like, uh, that's a yeah. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Because it, I don't want my mom to know. Uh, you feel me? It, 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 it's too much shit going on. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Like, I'm going to go get my shit. I'm going to just move it to the, the safe house. You feel me? Where I'm at. And I ain't got to worry about it no more. I ain't got to worry about whether or not I got to come over here and get my shit. You feel me? I, I like to move like that. You feel me? Not having, not working in the same space that, um, that I'm living at because this is like rules of the game, I guess you could say. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I got my shit. And I, I took it. I got my shit. My shit. Even though our shit was together, I got my shit. Left his shit. Took my shit to the crib. And then I didn't come back. Because what the fuck is the... And that's why I got grabs. Be, uh, but hold on. um, Yeah, I took my shit. And I didn't come back. Because what the fuck is the point of coming back? Y'all motherfuckers act weird. First off. And I, I've i definitely gotten that vibe. Like I can just get vibes from people. Like y'all motherfuckers act weird. Y'all funny acting. I can't get motherfuckers ass to the phone. Motherfuckers get to acting weird about me being there. And I'm just like. What the fuck have I even done to you? I haven't even. I did. I haven't. I've done nothing to you. But did you read my. You read my name. With the rap shit, and you barely fucking rap. I rap every day. I've, I've allowed access to the studio. I've done this. I've done that, and yet here I am in the same space. And it's like, uh, here I am. Y'all motherfuckers acting weird, but y'all want to rip my name. That's weird as fuck. I would definitely say that. That's weird as fuck. Weird. And then you, be just because of the fact that I came and got my shit and left and didn't come back because I have no point to come back, 
I'm the one who's suspect of taking your shit? When I haven't been here for weeks and when I did come, I got my shit and left. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> and then it, he gets to talking like, oh, well, we haven't seen you in a long time. And we just keep a track of all the people who used to be over here all the time. And they haven't came back. Well, motherfucker, I don't have a reason to come back. What the fuck is me coming here for like like what what's the point y'all motherfuckers act weird and the only time that y'all really want to fuck with me is when i got something so shit i'm just chill to myself fuck it fuck with the people who fuck with me and that's not all the gripes that's not all of them because I'm realizing that a lot of these niggas, they're weird as fuck. That's why I don't fuck with a lot of people. They're weird as shit. And it's like, I I look at all, I look at these people as my homies. You write my name. Oh, I'm LT. Only LT when it's convenient though. But you are my name, so yeah. If you if that's what you decided to do, I'ma treat you like family. Because for a long time didn't nobody want to rep the LT name when I wanted them to. But now that I then got fire as fuck, everybody know I'm fire as fuck. I got access to the studio. If you want to live that rap dream, if you want to start putting work in the studio, I'll let you come here and do it for free. This is the mic right here. I'm on the setup right now. I will let you come in and do it for free. No charges. All off the strength of the name. And it's because if you read my name, you're carrying me everywhere you go. So therefore, I would like to I would like for your music to have the be- I would like for you to have the best product. I would like for you to be fucking snapping. I would love for you to do well. Here's a cut from the original. Um really to be honest, everything that I said in that first cut Beyond what is in this cut, I honestly believe. But with this situation, there's more doubt. And I'll go into explaining where this cut is for people who don't explain because it was cut. Um, I took it down very early. But this was where I was talking about where my homie said he was going to kill me over a bitch. And that was crazy to me. I was like, bro, like, I really thought you was my homie for real. And I will say this, even though he did, even though if he did say all that, when she was telling me, I was laughing. I was taking it as, I was really taking it as a joke, like the whole way through, honestly, you really can't take that bitch serious. But I would still be like, yeah, (laughs) he said what he said, but that's my homie at the end of the day, like for real, (laughs) I did ass say that. But there is... I guess you say some happy ending to this. Um, <laughs> um she's a manipulator. <laughs> That's all I can say. She's a manipulator. And um <laughs> I guess we manipul- <laughs> we manipulated the manipulator. <laughs> For if she did. Cause I mean, we go out with the host gag way. <laughs> so we uh texted her and told her that we were fighting, and that like I was like I was like, I'm gonna blow something in this bitch like type shit, <laughs> like so the whole way she fell for it. Um, <laughs> she's still taking Texas both for both of us. So it's like, I from what I said in the first one, what you can take out of that shit is. Don't listen to no ho. Don't listen to these hoes. I fucked up listening to a ho. <laughs> Live. <laughs> but it is what it is. 
And, um, yeah. Really, she, she, she's crazy. Delusional. For real. And the, the thing about it is, she's for the streets. For the fucking highway, like, <laughs> for the city pool, for the YMCA. Bitch, so public, she belongs to the government. You feel me? <laughs> On some real shit. <laughs> and I'm just being real. And that would have fucking really hurt me, bro. Like, I was really mad about this shit. And one thing I did say, and I've been, because I'm a deep thinker, and I was thinking, like, it was really hypocritical. It was hypocritical of me to come on here and tell people, ah, uh, think rationally. Don't let emotions get away of your emotion. Uh, don't let emotions get in the way of fuck. <laughs> don't let emotions get in the way of your decisions or your rational thinking. So, with that being said, I came on here and let my emotions get in the way of my rational thinking. But at the end of the day. With everything that he said, she said. With everything that he said, she said. Um, there's his side, her side, and the truth. And whatever, whatever lies in the middle, fuck it, I'll deal with it. I don't really give a fuck because bros over hoes. Um, I take my niggas any day over a bitch, except in those circumstances. That a bitch, like if she really on her shit and she really doing something, got something going, she looking good, smelling good, shit, I'll take my bitch over a nigga any day in that circumstance. You feel me? It's like, sometimes you got to weigh your options. Really... I, I want to just fix my mistake in that in that section. But that first section where I said, if you don't fuck with me and you repping the ALT name, take that shit off. That's all. Okay? Just make that deal. And I was going to leave this section that I cut in for another episode. I was going to bring it up. First thing, episode two, fixing my wrongs. And it was going to be named, (laughs) how to fuck up your right, (laughs) how to fuck up your life. Fuck. (laughs) I forgot my name. It was, um, it was going to be named something. It was catchy. How to fuck up your life. I was like, how to fuck up your life one-on-one or something like that. Because, yeah, I came on here. And it's it's that that um echo chamber where you have nobody on here to correct you and and challenge your your ideas in times that you were wrong, which is well needed, which I will incorporate, and I will you feel me? I'll keep going, and <laughs> when I told you when I told him I was gonna come on here. And do that shit wrong? <laughs> I meant it. <laughs> For real. Um. Yeah. Shit. It is what it is. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. <laughs> it really... I couldn't take it, man. Some shit, like... It was like... I walked over there. I was like... Bruh. I just, I thought I was going to be able to ignore it, but I was like, nah, bro, I got to ask this nigga about this shit, bro. I called my brother. I was like, bro, I'm at this nigga house, bro. I got to ask this nigga what the fuck you said, dude, because this shit don't make no sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't crash out by the bitch that's for the streets. <laughs> like that don't make no fucking sense to me. Crashing out by the bitch that's for the streets. 
Hey, you ready to whack your main mans? You're fucking tricked out. And see, I'm the type of nigga, I wouldn't even say nothing. I won't say nothing. I just start watching you. How you move. How you react. Like, I know how you really feel deep down inside. But... You will never show it. <laughs> and I'm never going to fuck with you the same. <laughs> so, I guess we both got something to hide. I'm not a mean, spiteful person. I'm just saying, like, I guess we got something to hide. Can you think about this? You never fuck that bitch. <laughs> yeah. I did it in, like, one day. And I see it here in, like, a year. <laughs> That's a toughie, man. <laughs> That's a toughie. I love you, though. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> For real. <laughs> That's a toughie. Anyway, that's long ago. That's long ago. <laughs> that's long ago. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> That's so long. <laughs> oh my god. That is so long ago. <laughs> I can keep myself serious. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. Anyway. <laughs> Finally about the music. That's what I want to talk about this whole time. I just had all these gripes. I had all these gripes. Because it's just like, shit been eating me up inside. Shit been eating me up inside. I ain't said nothing. I ain't been talking. I ain't said nothing. Because y'all motherfuckers weird. I'm too real for this shit, man. And I'm starting to realize this, like... And I'm I'm going to say this, and I'm going to leave this shit alone. I might bring it up here once or twice in some episodes later down the line. But I will say this. If you rep the ALT name, and you don't fuck with me like that, take that shit out your name. Rep your own fucking shit. Do your own thing. I don't got to fuck with you when you got to fuck with me and we don't have to have no type of fake mutual understanding. That's not the type of per person. That's not the type of per person I am. I just don't give a fuck. Really. And the only reason I give a fuck now is because y'all still got my name. That's it. <laughs> Funny. Anyway. I've been really thinking about doing a podcast for a long time. And it's been probably about some months. My first time ever taking shrooms. I thought about doing a podcast because I was like, bruh, the fucking ideas in my head right now, the shit that I can talk about. It's a lot. And I feel like a lot of people need to hear it. So I was like, yeah. Well, I didn't know. I don't have the know-how. I didn't, I didn't have the know-how. So it was just like, how the f I need two mics. I got the two mics. I just need another cord for the other mic, which is this one right here. I need another cord for it. But once I get a cord for that, then I'll have people on here. And then, like, I kind of figured out a way to, you know, finagle the video element because I, I don't think that I got that much space on my phone, so I'll probably have to do them episode by episode and delete them later. And then on top of that, um, just getting two mics and syncing it up and putting it in with the audio and how the fuck I'm going to do all that. So, fucking nigga related. I got too much on my mind at this point. God damn, I don't know what the fuck. I got to burp so much right now. I'm going to fucking get this shit on my mind. Just get this shit out there and just start doing it and see where the fuck it goes. But on to the music. 
I was talking to Duran Isabel, which is um he's a movie director and uh he shot a movie called Candy and um The Last Disciples, which The Last Disciples is the only one I've seen. It's really good. It's got like two million views on YouTube. And um he's very important around, you know, in the city, like when certain people know, like if you know, you know. And if you hear that name, Duran Isabel, and he's working on something. Yeah, it, it's going to be official. There's no half-ass with that man. And that's one thing I like about him. And it's a lot you can learn in um, being around him and just being around the people that he has around him. He has a lot of creative minds. And I was talking to him today, and I was like, uh, it's a podcast in the city called, um, it's called uh, Trap Set Podcast. And I want to get on there and, you know, talk like this and just get off my gripes and just have a conversation and let people know like what I know like musically and I'm gonna get on to that but just you know rambling but um he was like yeah you we can do that and I was like all right bet give me in contact with them but I'm just thinking like that might take too long I mean I've been talking about this for a long time. I really want to get done. I have a lot of shit to say. I'm feeling some type of way in this moment like these niggas acting weird and I want to talk about the music and just what I got going on with that. And I just need it done like right now. So and I was just I was thinking it, it was I don't know why it kept going through my head, but it was like if you want something done, right? Do it yourself. And it was just, it just kept playing around. If you really want something done right, do it yourself. So I said, "Fuck it." I have the audio engineer know audio engineering know how to make it sound equalized, all that shit without a beat or anything. That's fucking easy. Cause it's just it's basically like I just got a solo. Um, I just got a solo. I just got a solo line on here. So shit, it's just like a, you feel me? For audio engineers, it's just like you solo the line, that's it, no beat, no nothing. But, um, um, musically, uh, I've been working on a project for uh, about a year, about a year. It's August now, I think. No, it's September. I dropped last August, so it's been a month over a year. Yep, it's been a month over a year, and the project I would I would really say it's done. I haven't added any more songs. Haven't thought about adding any more songs. I'm really just thinking about the delivery. How I'm gonna get it out there, and I got plans on that. But really, mainly, I just want to talk to people now. I want them to understand me because I feel like I'm really misunderstood. I want them to understand, like, my mindset, the the reason why I am the way I am, the way I move the way I am. I mean, the way I move the way I move and the way I act the way I act and the way the, the, my, my music is the way it is. And um, it really boils down to... It really boils down to me... I guess you could say wanting to have a voice and wanting to speak some some real shit that I feel like the rap game is missing. Like Tupac, for instance, he spoke shit that lasted for generation after generation, even after his death. So it's like I want to have a voice and I want to put a realness back into the game that I feel like we have lost over the years. It's all about fake it till you make it, flun. And how much money you can make, what bitches you can fuck, what drugs you have sold, what houses you went in, and and what you've done, how have you earned your stripes. That's what music is, I feel like. But there's more serious topics that can be touched on. Definitely. But... I say that to say I've touched I've touched the same topics like drugs, 
robberies, that different kind of stuff. But I say on the like, okay, for instance, on the last album, it was more like on the street level, like, like, like some that you could play in a club or like more like that street that street raw time music even though i had some music where i'm telling real shit and it coming to but it's still it's still raw you feel me it's still um that trap you feel me like it's got that trap ambition to it and that's the only way i can explain it it had a wide range of sounds like i can't go back which it's more like uh, in a, it, it it showed what I was going to do in the future. That's all I can really say. Like reminiscing, uh, Heartbreak on the Hilltop. There more songs that show what I was going to dive into and what I have dived into, the the lane that I've tapped into. Like if, if you're listening to now, there's no new music. But if you go back to Northside Youngin by AOT the Youngin and you listen to Heartbreak on the Hilltop, I can't go back reminiscing them three. Yeah, that's what you should be looking at to get in the near future when it comes to music. And um, I was going I, I was thinking because there's so many songs on there. I was thinking, but I can't fucking. Um, I don't know if I had a real conscious rappy type song, which. It'd probably be reminiscing, but I got like, like shit, like that remind me of like fear back in the day, or like uh, dying to live, like some shit when I made when I was fourteen, some real conscious rap shit that's got real consequences, real life implications, and one of them songs that really hit for a lot of people and Duran, Duran really wanted to shoot, um. Which I feel like we will still possibly do in the future, even though that's what we're talking about. You feel me? But anyway, I feel like um, Genesis Story. It's a song called Genesis Story, and it's about my life, but it's told from my dad's perspective. So, um, it starts off talking about... Uh, how my dad started selling drugs, let's just say. Um, and it was like my mom and my dad were going together around this time, and this is this this is the start of the song. But my mom and the dad were together around this time, and people in my mom's side of the family were doing crack. And it was like, okay. And this I know, like, okay. And it's, it comes together even more, even after the fact the song is made, because there's even more information coming back out that I, I mean, I know, but I can't really just go back and try to fix it. It's, it's a masterpiece at this point. I feel like it's done. It's, I'm going to say all I'm going to say. I feel like I got my point across perfectly clear. And just more information that comes out just can be added on to what I will be able to tell later. But come to find out yesterday or a few days ago, actually, uh, my cousin Dennis was telling me about how they used to stay out there in New Project. And I was like, and the one thing I said about that, because he was like, oh, this was back in the 70s. I was like, I was like, you know what's crazy about that? They used the term project. They never use that. Even if I feel like they make a project, a new project today, they would name it something different. Like it would never have the term project in it. And I feel like that is a that is a fact going forward forever. Project is just like a derogatory term, like um, retarded. You feel me? Like one time at one point in time, retarded was a medical term. But now. It's a derogatory term. You can't, it, it, it's, um, it's impolite to use that. And it's kind of like the same box that I say project would be. I mean, people say project. Oh, yeah, I'm from the project. But like, 
from a government standpoint, like from people who put money into this shit, they're not going to they're not going to use that term. But um, anyway, uh, so he said he was talking about he, they were living in a new project. They were living in one of the, the big houses, but Moon and shit was out there. My uh, Uncle Moon. I think my grandma's brother. But they were all out there. My grandma was living out there. So that I mean, my mom was living out there. And my auntie was living out there. And Moon, you feel me? My family, both sides of my family were out there. Okay. Moon was on crack. So, my mama knew what it looked like. Not necessarily. Maybe she may have knew what it actually looked like, like the rock. But she knew what the high looked like. And so, that being said, when my grandfather was showing up around the house late at night, high and shit, she knew. But my dad didn't. You feel me? So it's like she she told him, yeah. And he was dumbfounded, like, what the fuck, like, fuck, ain't no way. But it is a way. And so he started selling it to him, and this was probably like eighteen, nineteen, around the time when. I was being conceived, I guess. And, um, yeah, that's how it started. Yeah, for me. And, um, it only got him in deeper because he, he was selling pounds of weed at a time, but the fact that his dad started smoking and he started selling to him made him get into the game deeper. So, And I have something to say about that because this is one thing that I've also wanted to get off my chest and speak about. Because in a rap game, there's like a kind of like an understanding that one of the ways that you can get up or be able to finance your rap career in the early stages is by selling drugs, which I haven't. I've never sold a hard drug, and I'll just be honest, but... I have so weak. And um one day uh I I I got a, I got connections with a lot of important people in the city. I'd rather have more and I'd rather, you feel me, try to get respect from some other folks like Big Pope and, and do and and work with these folks, but the time will come if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But one of the rappers that I'm really close with, um, I was like, hey, man, you don't be answering the phone, you feel me? And I was like, I, I tried to get it, you feel me? I tried to get a pound from you, but uh, I can't I can't get you in the phone, you feel me? I, I'm done now, you feel me? I, I felt like that wasn't for me, but when I was, hell, uh, shit, I, it's only a certain amount of people that can you feel me get it to me in a price range that I need. It was and it was like, you know what, bro? And this is right after um, because we're doing a, a fashion show event on the twenty fourth of September, which is this month, and it is currently um, it is currently the nineteenth. Um, but yeah, so we're sitting there. I did my performance, and like I said, I don't know if I said this in this podcast already, but I've said it. A good amount of time in the past few days, so that's why it feels like I have. But I said, "Well, uh, no, I didn't say anything. Take it back." Um, I had got me and my homeboy did our song or whatever. Then it was my turn to do my solo song, and it was like, "Yeah, they heard us together." But then once my song started playing, and I've seen this happen a lot of times. When I put this new music, like the new music, it's it's not released. It's nowhere. It's nowhere. But once I put the music in the room, motherfuckers just shut up. They shut the fuck up. They get quiet. And then they listen. And then once they realize, like, 
oh fuck, he talking about some shit. And then I'm talk, I, I I don't stop talking about, I don't stop talking about that real shit. Then then afterwards, like they'll come up to me to be like, oh my, I love your music. It's just it's so good. Uh, my uncle was even telling me like it was somebody even there that was like they was like I love his music. I, I'm trying to find it. It was not, I was I was telling people like I'm sorry it's not released. I can't. You feel me? It's probably gonna come out next year sometime. I lied though. It's probably it's gonna come out like next month. But anyway, um, yeah, they shut the fuck up and listen. And um, so yeah, I I get off. I do my song. They, they, they really liked it. Everybody liked it. They really loved it. So then I go sit down. I sit next to him. And then, uh, uh, girl comes up to me. She's talking like, uh, oh, I love your music. Where can I find it on? I'm music. And I'm like, it's not even released or nothing. Like, she's like, when it's going to come out? I'm like, uh, sometime next year. And then she's like, oh my God, it's next year. And I'm like, yeah, like, I got all this, it's so deep, I got all this good music, it's all this deep music, and I don't want to, I don't want to waste it, I want to, I want to present it, like, I want to give it a, the best presentation I can, but, anyway, I say that to say that, okay, so once she, she walks away or whatever, and I'm, I'm talking to her, I'm like, yeah, uh, I need that pound, and he was like, you, you know what, bro? Even if you did call me and I answered the phone, I would have never sold it to you. I was like, what you, what you mean? It's like, yeah, I, I would have never sold it to you. That only gets you deeper in. And I said, I actually, I didn't say nothing. I just, I just looked at him like, I was just looking like, I didn't say nothing. I, I get in that mode sometimes where I'm just analyzing everything you're saying. So I'm just analyzing it. And he said, uh, he's just like, nah, man, that's only going to get you deeper in. And then he was like, you just focus on music. That's you. Focus on music. That's, he was like, yeah, it's kind of like a cheat code. You feel me? It's kind of like a cheat code, which it kind of is. It's kind of like a cheat code. Kind of gets you in the door a little earlier. But if you go the music route purely, it's going to take you a little longer. And that's not what he said. That's what I'm just saying. It's going to take you a little longer. But one thing I do know. One thing I do know is that things that come quickly leave quickly. And things that take a long time. Like if you worked years and years and years to get something. It's going to take years and years and years to leave unless you just fuck it up. Unless you just royally fuck it up. But if you worked a long time, like let's say you got a business and you worked 20 years to build a foundation for that business. It is is more unlikely that you're going to go out of business within the next 20 years than a business who just started what five years ago and that may or may not be a hundred percent true in all circumstances but in most it probably is because of the simple fact that you have this fan you have this foundation built you have you're established and now it's been so much so long that you probably got regulars now and every time every time somebody new comes into town or something and they're around the street and you're you have a really good you got really good food and somebody asks, they're like, oh, I'm hungry as fuck. Uh, what's good around here? They're gonna send them probably your way. Because you got that found you you've been established. But I I was thinking about that. I was like, I don't know, maybe that's a sign. Like, um, maybe that's just a sign. Like Maybe my music is just that good to the point where I don't need to sell drugs or or do this or do that to get ahead. The music going to speak for itself. I know that. The music going to speak for itself. But for somebody in a position like him who's already basically been established around here 
And everybody is looking at him. He's got all the eyes. He's got all the money. He's got the deal. Everything. And that's the way he did it for him to turn around and tell me, nah, that's not the way for you. That means something because it's like, what is the way then? I, I'm I'm under understanding like I gotta get money. I gotta I gotta get it by any means. That's how you did it. But he's turning around and telling me, nah, that only gets you in deeper. Just. Stick to the music. Work on the music. That's your that's your strength. I believe it. Because it's just that fucking aura. Like uh, the aura about the music. It's it's just, just it's that aura that once you listen to it, you like, what the fuck else he got? Because Yep, fuck, I went on this big ass tangent and I was trying to tell a story about Genesis story and I'm never going to get to the end. Anyway, <laughs> um, I was saying, and back, this is back to the Genesis story, I'm sorry, but, um, yeah, she was telling my dad, um, yeah, your dad's on crack and they got him only in deeper and he, he started making more money. So he started buying shit, fucking having the hell of bank wise, going shopping every day, got fucking donks with wheels on them and shit. But he was living his lifestyle too open. Too many people can see your operation, how it work and how it's moving. And that's not good that's not a good thing in the dope game. So and plus, fucking on all different kind of bitches and having a baby on the way and all that different kind of shit. That builds up bad karma that's definitely going to come back on you. Um, He ends up getting robbed. And they were more than willing to kill us for whatever they were going to get it. Probably because it was worth that much. Not really. I mean, twenty thousand dollars and maybe ten thousand worth of drugs. Fifteen. Is that worth killing two people? Worth is that? I mean, it's up to it's subjective discretion whether or not that would be worth it. It depends on your circumstances. But some people who are at the lowest of the low, like if a homeless man who's out on drugs, out doing, out on strung out on meth or heroin or something, and they hear about this guy who got twenty thousand dollars, and they got, and he has um twenty thousand dollars, and all the drugs you can get, you can get high for weeks, you can get high for weeks, for weeks, months, maybe even six months. Depending on how you use it. They'll risk their life. That they don't they don't give a fuck. If you got a fucking army in that bitch waiting to blow they bitch ass down when they come through the door. They're they're gonna risk their life. Because thirty thousand dollars when you have nothing is worth your life. Cause I mean, what else do you got to fucking lose? But in this circumstance, what? He was a known murderer? What else do you got to fucking lose? And like I said, as time goes on, more things start to come out. And one thing that really never did come out that it was my mom's start, my mom's side. And what really tore me up. And made me just think was it was the fact that my mom, she told me this. She told it to me, but it was a different story. It was different. I'm not going to really explain how it was different, but here's this thing. On my graduation day, I mean, not my graduation day, but uh, graduation party day, my mom she broke down and uh 
it was about 10 people who got up on stage with the mic and just talked to me and just telling me like, you got this ahead of you and this part of your life and this and that, just give me life lessons and telling me by myself, telling me that I made it because neither one of my parents has graduated high school. So it was a big, it was a big moment. Um, but one thing my mom did say when she got up, she was like, it's something special about you, Artavius. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's something special about you. And she said, um, people just gravitate towards you. They, they gravitate towards you. And it's always felt like that. It's always been like, I've, I've always been the favorite on both sides of the family. Like, it's like everybody gravitates towards me. Like, what up, Artavius? Like, I don't know. But one one night, she was talking to me. Uh, I forgot what the fuck the conversation was about or how we even got up on this conversation. But she told me about that night, which I think she never heard the Genesis Story song. But I say that to say, she said, the only reason they didn't kill us that night was because of you. They heard you crying. And they said, oh, shit, y'all got a baby in here? We would have never even did y'all like that if we knew y'all had a baby in here. And then she was like, you, if it wasn't for you, I would have never been here. And then she said, God brought you in this world to save my life. She said, I had a baby at 18. And little did I know, the reason why he gave me a baby so young was because later on down the line, later on down the line you would save my life. And she said, the reason why people gravitate towards you like that is because you're a guardian angel. And that just made me think, I was like, is that why I'm still here? Is that why I'm doing what I'm doing? Am I the, am I, and that's kind of narcissistic, but am I the chosen one? Was I, was I put here to save my parents' life before I could even know what saving a life was? And then I somehow stumble up on this rap dream and become really good at it. And then I make it. Because that's what the Genesis story song is about. It's about my dad, how he living his fast life. He doing this, he doing that. He he not under, he not seeing it. Hello? I'm back. Um, he's not seeing it. He's not seeing it. He's not seeing what he's doing. He's not paying attention. And if he was, he wasn't paying close enough attention because it's like he's a rookie to the game. He, he don't understand how deep this shit really can get sometime. So that's how he end up at 20 years old, maybe. 21, 22, with no murderers in his house. Trying to take whatever drugs, whatever money he has in there and willing to kill his whole family for it. And that's what the Genesis story song is. And I've got deep ass fucking... I think maybe for the next few episodes, because I'm about to wrap, I'm about to wrap it up, but um, for the next few episodes... Each one, I'll maybe bring up a song and explain the story that I got to it. And we'll we'll go from there. But if you made it this far, I would like to thank you. I really, 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 really like to thank you for tuning in to the first ever Always On Top podcast for seeing this thing through for all the rambling that I did. Maybe next time I can get my thoughts more cohesive and 
Stop fucking rambling. <laughs> Stop rambling, but <laughs> that. Um I'll come back when I got more to talk about, some more things on my mind. Uh soon I'll have some guests because like certain people um that I that I really want to get on here and just have that conversation with that I because some of these people I've never really just sat down for an hour and just talked. They've always just high and by brush here and there. And I want to sit down with some of these people and just talk like um, I'll just throw some people out there that I'm um, trying to get ready to put in here. But um, we got Lil Jello, Lil Jello, my bad, Jello, love you, bro. Um, I haven't talked to Thule, but I'm going to try to get him on here. Um, Durant Isabel, me and Durant Isabel have the most, the best ever creative discussions. And it's just a lot you can learn from that, man. I really, I really appreciate him for allowing me to be on his event. I want to say that again. Um, who else? Dennis. Dennis, he's off the fucking wall. <laughs> Dennis is off the wall, but. He knows some shit, so I I I um I really like to get Dennis on here, and then I'll I'll think some more as we're going on. Me and my cousin um Demori, actually I told her I wanted to get her on a podcast, and that that one's more gonna be like a funny one. There's more that's more gonna be like a fun one because um you know <laughs> we're gonna get drunk and just kick the shit. And I'm doing this so people can better understand me, better understand how I am, and show a different side to me as an artist before all this music comes out and people start to create their own opinions. I just want to get my own form of medium out there and just be able to do my own thing and talk about some shit sometimes because... In the later episodes, we're going to touch on different topics like... Depression, suicide, um, drug addiction, homelessness, growing up without fathers. It's all different kind of shit that I've experienced in my short 18 years of life. Not only myself, but having friends around me who dealt with it and have family members really close dealing with it. It's a lot. And I want to put my own two cents on all of this because I feel like I have like like the music. When I start talking, they listen. I feel like I have. I'm not going to just sit here and to my own like all my ideas are correct. I know everything. I know what the fuck I'm talking about, because honestly, I don't. I just feel like I have a good rational idea when it comes i don't let emotions not a lot of times sometimes i can because i'm human but i don't let a lot of i don't let emotions get in the way of rational thinking i feel like rational thinking should stay on top of whatever emotions you're feeling in certain situations in a lot of situations because that's the only way you're going to get to a conclusion and a solution Is if you think rationally beyond your emotions, because once you start thinking with emotions, you start thinking irrationally. You start making decisions based off on how you feel, regardless of the consequences or how other people people feel because of the simple fact that you're feeling the way you are. So in order to look at the the situation from a 360 point of view, from all people's sides, and to get a reasonable conclusion in the middle where everybody is happy, you have to think rationally. But anyway, that is a tangent like I always go on. I love all y'all. Thank you for tuning in. I'm fuck. Thank you if you really made it to the end. Thank you. This is the first Always On Top podcast. There will be more to come. And I'm out. Peace.